Hey folks, the desert artist here. I am going to uh, let me move this stuff out of the way real quick. Ah, what do you think of this guy, huh? Ah, he's got big old antennas. I don't know. I'm still working on them. I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to do yet. But I do know what I'm going to do with this. I I have this old purse from the 1970s. And it's, it's kind of, uh, it seems to be, it has this old raggedy pocket in here. A little doohickey right there. Where that seam is at. It's, it broke. Well, this is all one solid piece of leather going all the way around here now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all this out. And I'm going to take this off. And I'm going to remove it. And I'm going to take it apart. And then I'm going to put it back together. Um, and I'm going to replace this little pocket in here because it's just kind of glued in there. And it's kind of the glues came apart because it's, well, 50 years old. So I'm going to refluff it up and uh, with a wire brush and going to uh, make a new pocket out of, uh, out of leather. And because it pocket that was in here just looks like it was just like an old t-shirt or an old pair of underwear or something I don't know I'm gonna take it out and I'm going to uh, replace it and see if I can I want to keep the patina on this color of leather here because it's kind of cool because you can see it's got some mold or mildew or powder or water stains or something on it I don't know I sold it on eBay originally and the lady didn't like it because I told her it had to be refinished and redone and re it needed to be redone. And so I had sold it on eBay for $40 and the lady ended up not liking it so I ended up refunding her the money and the shipping and so uh, I figured that I would uh, make a YouTube video on refinishing this old uh, hippie purse here with the little pot leaves on it and uh, the cute little flowers and I don't have any paint to paint it so I'm gonna I don't know what I'm gonna do I'm gonna find out what I'm gonna do when I take it apart I got some nylon cording that I use for them cheesy wire wrap pendants that I have that I did a really horrible job on. God put stuff in our life for a reason and if it wasn't meant for you to give it away well guess what you're gonna have to pay for it shipping it back then you have to figure out a way to pay for the shipping that you lost out on so that's what I'm doing right now is I'm figuring out what to you know that doesn't look like much of a pocket you know it almost like it needs a another piece of leather in here to kind of give it a little depth so that's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna take that one off too it's all got to be cohesive right it's all got to have the same stuff on it otherwise it doesn't look like it match <laughs> Piece of leather is all clean and ready to do something with. Now the nylon lacing that I have is actually black. 
And I think I've got some black leather around here somewhere. So in order to correlate the black lacing, I'm going to have to use black leather in here somewhere. Make it all kind of blend together so it's a systemic and, you know, looks like it kind of goes together. Not look like some old hippie guy just took it apart and laced it together with just a bunch of stuff. Right? Got to be artistic, right? Alright, there we go. Look at that. Well, now we know how the thing went together. There's your pattern for making a purse, basically. Backside and your little flappy and front side. Little pocket on the front. That's pretty simple, huh? One, two, three, four. Now when I get done with this, I'm going to take it down to the biker shop. He sells CBD oil. Seeing that it's got pot plant leaves on it already. And it'll be a vintage reconstruction. I might be able to get a couple hundred dollars out of one of them rich bikers, you know. If they're actually a rich biker. They might be a poor biker thinking they're buying something cool. Regardless, I'm going to get my money out of this thing. Now, you can see kind of the crappy job they did at gluing this on there. You see, they didn't even round the edges. They just like cut it some sort of Mickey Mouse type style and slapped it in there. That doesn't look very creative, does it? I mean, really, look at that. They just sewed that in there and punched the holes through it, glued it on there, probably with Elmer's glue or something. Maybe they used Mighty Mend it. I don't know, it's awful dusty. Looks like maybe it was a pillowcase. Well, whoever it was, they weren't a very skilled craftsman. Might be able to reuse the zipper. So are they very good? Or just rotten thread? I guess if it's 50 years old, it's probably rotten. Well, we've got it all cleaned up. Well, it's not really clean, but... Now we've got to get this stuff off here, right? It's an old gnarly wire brush rider. Makes the leather look good, but it doesn't touch this stuff here. And I can use a wire power brush. Power wire brush wheel doohickey. Good thing this leather's kind of thick. Oh, look at that. That's real cowhide there now. There's maybe 15 or 20 weight. Who knows? Oh, that leaves such a good finish, I think I'm going to sand it all. I might actually get a real piece of sandpaper as opposed to using this thing. Oh, my luck, I'd wear off runs one side and it would be ruined. Try the fine stuff first. The fine stuff seems to do okay. I'm 
Well, I use up a lot of elbow grease now. Well, we've got all that stuff kind of off there. You can still see a few residuals here. That looks a little better on the inside now. Now we're gonna have to slap some of that shoe grease on there to get some of this brown and stuff off of here. Here's what I'm gonna be using: Hubbard shoe grease. Some shags. Wonder if that's a store that Scooby and Shaggy opened up after they got out of the cartoon business. Okay, nice and greasy. We're just going to put some of this on here like this. And we're going to rub it in. Or this is axle grease from the Mystery Mobile. Got a fine brush here that's it's brass, but it's still wiry. I don't know how it's gonna work, so we're just gonna brush over it and see if we can get some of that leather scratched up to soak in some of that oil. I'm sorry, shoe grease. I'm not gonna use it over here because I don't wanna mess up the little paint job that's right here. Now, I ain't being shy with this grease now. I'm slapping it on there. This leather's old. It's probably really thirsty. Well, that makes the colors kind of pop a little bit, doesn't it? Makes it look nice. A real vintage feel of a pot dealer purse right there now. There's still a little bit of dry stuff right there. You see it? You see it where there's a little bit of crack still in there? I'm go ahead and throw some more on there. Well, I got a big old glob now. Like I said, I ain't scared to use it. We got that, got the patina on here, and I didn't want to use this when it was dry because it would have just scraped all that stuff off and took off all the color. And now that it's nice and greasy, it just slips around and scuffs the leather up a little bit to suck in all that stuff. All right, sorry about that. The battery died. All right, so I'm going to put this on the heater to let it heat up and soak in some of that stuff. Now because I want that patina all the way around, make sure this thing ain't getting too hot. Well, 
it's not. It looked like it soaked in pretty good. It's only been there for about 10 minutes. Long enough for me to brush this out. What I'm doing now is I'm just trying to soften it up and get that oil kind of pressed into the fibers there. You know, because look, it doesn't look as cute as it did before now. It's there, but doesn't the colors not standing out or or anything. So it just got a little drink and that was it. Put that to the side and I'll continue working on what I'm working on here. I wanted to keep this patina, so I'm gonna it's got some water damage there now, so I don't know how that's going to come out, but it probably should. Again, this is going to be the bottom of the purse, I should probably use some more grease. Now, it doesn't say what kind of grease it is, but it, for being old, it doesn't smell like doesn't smell like anything, but it's not recommended for suede, white, or light colored leather. Now this is great. Some of it seems to be pretty thin and some of it seems to be thick. I don't know if there was some sort of separation in there or not. With a lot of this stuff, you know, it's all about knowing what you think is right. And a, and a lot of people are like, well, how do you know if it's right? You have faith in your knowledge of God. Ah, don't shut off the don't shut off the video. Hold on a minute. Maybe you're looking to shut off the video because I mentioned the word God. Well you're going to have bigger issues in the future. I'm about to explain to you what God is. God thinks it's some big omni omnipotent dude upstairs living in the clouds. No. God is what's up here. God is in your head. Satan is there too now. Be careful. That's the reason why we have the Word of God. To know the difference between right and wrong and because a lot of us, we don't know the difference between right and wrong, and we'll end up doing the wrong thing and end up reaping the consequences and then blaming God when He gave us the Word to read, to know, to understand, and He gave us the gift of Jesus. Ah, wait, don't turn off the video yet. Don't freak out. I'm into some all mythology and stuff and how He didn't exist. Well, He did exist. There's plenty of things. You can find one or two things where it's like, oh, no, He didn't, but He did. There's too many things that say that he did. There's not enough things to say he didn't. And you can't believe a non-truth without evidence. There was evidence that unicorns existed, but you didn't believe it? Would you choose to listen to the reason why they existed? What if I told you unicorns do exist? What? Yeah. They're called rhinoceros. What's the Latin name for rhinoceros? Basically, a unicorn. The mythology exists, and my little pony is using a rainbows and elf farts to make you think that it's a horse. That's the power of media. How they can brainwash you. And to believe in whatever they want you to believe. Yet the Word of God's been there forever. Well, not really forever, but you know, you know what I mean. 
And if you chose not to listen to my video and watch what I'm doing, all because I spoke the word God and mentioned Jesus, well, that shows the power of Satan can have over you and just say, don't listen to him, he's a weirdo. I am a weirdo. Look at me, I'm talking to a camera. What kind of normal man talks to a camera? Like a real human being. Who does that? <laughs> this guy. Because I know there's one person I can get out to that I can help believe that God is the power that brings together the space dust that we're made out of. That's right, little molecules and atoms all mingling together with that electronic flux that gives us the energy up here to know the difference between right and wrong and how to progress in our lives. That, my friends, is the God factor. That's right. That universal energy that brings together all those molecules and atoms in order to be able to perceive reality, inflict and have change on it. That is the power of God. Not some big omnipotent dude upstairs. It is the power of the universe. We have the power of the universe right up here. It's not going anywhere. No matter how much you choose not to believe, it's still there. What is heaven, you ask? Well, we're, we're living in it. We're living right in the middle of it in one little blue ball. What happens when we die? That energy that we have up here goes back out into the universe. But we don't know what's there. But we know that it's there. Those of us that believe know that when we die, we will end up going someplace that we don't know what it is. Now what I'm doing right now is I'm just kind of finagling this leather, stretching it out a little bit to work in that shoe grease. Because that's what it takes to get in there. That leather is hard stuff now. Well, see? Doing all that stuff, I got a crack in it. That's not good. I think it'll be okay though. If not, well, I'll just have to make another belt for it. No problem. I am going to put some more grease there though. Keep it from drying out. Any more than it already is. Now if I really wanted to rehydrate it, I'd put it on the suede side where you're not supposed to put it. The reason why they tell you not to put it on the suede side is because it really sucks it up. And then it discolors the leather. Let me show you. Because I'm going to do it anyway. Because God's telling me that's what I need to do. It's going to soak in and it's not going to bother the person wearing it at all. Look at that. Oh, a big old glob on there. It already sucked it all in. I'm going to end up using this whole can of grease on this one little purse. Look at how quickly that soaked in. Man. That is thirsty. You know, it took me until the age of 45 before I realized what God was. I was an atheist. I didn't want to believe he existed. There's no God. If Jesus existed, he'd walk up to me in the desert and give me a glass of water. 
I'm not that important. Travesties happen. People die. The earth has earthquakes. People kill each other. It's not God's fault people kill each other. Because those people decided to, that they had control over whatever they could get their hands on. Which is true. You can go out and kill anybody you want. Regardless if God's going to save them or not. They're going to stuff's going to happen. God a baby killer? Could be. Could be because the parents decided to do drugs and drink alcohol and party while they were pregnant. That could 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 have lived to cure cancer. That kid could have grew up to be a mass murderer. We don't know. God has a plan. Right? People don't want to hear that. God doesn't have a plan. What are you smoking? God has a plan. We don't know it. People live. People die. Some people get to share their experiences and knowledge with the world like I'm doing right here with this, with you. Telling you how to do this stuff. If I didn't, if I didn't make a video of it, you wouldn't know how to do it. Or maybe you would. Maybe you'd learn from somebody else. But guess what? You're learning it from me. I have that impact on your life. That is an important part of life. Having an impact on those people in which you have a connection. And all you people out there, you're part of my life. You are important. You can change the world. Whether it's changing the world by teaching somebody how to put a reconstruct a leather purse, or where you can change the world trying to explain God to somebody. Whether they want to listen, that's their own choice. I have nothing to do with it. I'm trying. That's all I'm doing is trying. God knows. My consciousness knows. My conscious mind knows. That connection to God knows that I am trying to connect to you. Trying to tell you. Explain to you so you can have the tangibility that I did not until I was 45. Can you imagine the things I could have done if I would have known about God before I was 45? If I would have known how to pass on that power of God, which is the knowledge. The knowledge that you pass on, that's the power of God. Not the tangible stuff. Although it helps. However, some way, some way, it's going to happen. It's gonna, it'll come into handy. But if you don't want it to, you want to shut off the video because this weird dude's talking about God and Jesus and how to save your life. That's up to you. You can turn it off if you want to. But if I change the life, the direction of just one person, that's all that matters to me. One person. If it reaches a thousand, great. Does it matter? Yeah. Deep down inside, to God it matters. To know that you have the connection. You can close your eyes and you can have that connection to God. You can ask Him a question and He will provide you with an answer. That's right. God can provide you with an answer. You want to hear my testimony while I'm here telling you about doing all this stuff? Mine as well happened when I was 17. My mom decided that she wanted to go on a decided she wanted to go on a trip to Mexico. Spend a month in Mazatlan. There it is right there. So my dad was a, owned a construction company. So my mom was able to get a 
I don't know, some sort of a 28 foot trailer, just something, just a regular old trailer. We hooked it up to the blazer and off we went from northern part of Washington. We in a town called Tenasket. It's only about 30 miles from the border of Canada. We drove all the way down to Mazalan, Mexico. I took three months out of school. The way that I got credit for doing it, because it was in the middle of February. The way that I got credit for my school credit was I had to write a report about what happened every day on the way down. What I saw, what I learned, what I came across, everything like a big diary. So I wrote this, I don't know, I think it was like 30 pages or something of of a report going down to Mexico. Well, we came across things we learned and what each town was. It was really simple. Just get a, you know, just basically get a stop at every welcome station and get a little pamphlets about the state and everything. And I just transposed those onto my report. It was really simple, stupid stuff. I got credit. I didn't care. I was young and stupid and just wanted to get through school, like most kids. So I ended up writing this 30 page report and page a day really simple well when we were in Sand Lake Oregon if y'all ever been to Sand Lake Oregon it's nothing but a bunch of sand and a lake in the middle of it that's well I walked up from the we we're right in town to some sort of a little RV park right there north of town so we were there and, well you know, I'm from inland Washington. I'm from, well, I don't have an ocean there to walk along a beach. But I grew up in the mountains now. I, I, could, I could walk quite a spell without getting tired. Well, the thing about the beach there is the beach just keeps going. It doesn't stop. It goes all the way up to Oregon, all the way up into Canada and Alaska. You can walk for miles and miles and miles. I didn't realize how far I was walking. I was just walking because it was cool to walk that way. So I just kept walking and I eventually ran into this. There was this little trail that was kind of up on the bank there. and kind of went up on the top of the bank because it was mostly cliffs right there. So I followed this trail and I went up on the, followed up the top of the cliff there. And there was a little Boy Scout camp that was up there. There was nobody there, but there were lights on in the buildings, and they were unlocked, and I was young and dumb and full of stuff, and I just went, walked right in, walked around, and I was like, well, cool, there's a road right there, I can walk back on the road, and just kept walking, I just turned around, walked the other way down the road, not going where I came from, not knowing where I was going, not knowing that I had a path, but I was going to walk right down that road because that had to go back to where I came from. It didn't. I was walking down that road and it got further away from the beach and further and further and further. And then there was this little offshoot, this little road, this little dirt road that you know, looked, like, looked like it was well traveled, right? I was like, well, it goes back towards the beach. It's got to lead back to it somehow. Well, I walked down this, down this road and I kept walking and walking and I must have walked two miles. Of course, that was after I had walked probably 10 miles up the beach. Because it was, it was close to getting dark. And it was, I'd been on the beach for quite a few minutes now. I left at probably about lunch time. So when you're a kid and you're walking up the beach, well, you can get two or three miles in an hour. Easy. Right? You're just walking up the beach looking at stuff. Two or three miles an hour, that ain't no problem at all. Well, Next thing you know, it's three hours later, and I'm ten miles up the beach, and, well, I went off the beach, went up this hill, and, well, I'm just going to take the road back. Well, that was about the stupidest thing I could have done. So I ended up taking this road back, and, and I took this little offshoot that went back towards the beach. Well, this Jeep road, I was more like a, a good driveway. And I walked down this driveway about a mile, then it turned into a jeep trail. I walked down that jeep trail about another mile and then it turned into a goat trail and then I went for another mile then it ended. 
and that was it. It just done stopped, and there was, it ended up being nothing but a rabbit trail after that. So I'm walking down this rabbit trail, and I'm like, it's got to lead down to the ocean at some point. I can, I can hear it right ahead of me. I can hear the ocean right there. Oh, I kept walking down that goat trail, and I was walking through underbrush. It was eight feet tall, and it started raining. It was getting dark, and it was raining. So my heart starts pounding. I don't know what I'm going to do. Right? It's getting dark, and my mom's probably out looking for me, and I'm in the middle of eight feet of underbrush, and I mean, I was walking on the top of weeds, and I was... Finally, I just had to, I, I stopped, and it got to a little clearing, and I could hear the ocean right there. That ocean was bouncing off of a mountainside. So I wasn't walking towards the ocean, I was walking towards a mountain that was reflecting the sound of the ocean towards me. Right then, I was dating a girl that was Christian, and and I was going to church, well, to quarter, you know. Well, at that time, I that was my that was my first pull towards God. As I I stopped right there, and and I I didn't know what to do. I prayed to God. I prayed to God. Dear dear God, help me. What am I gonna do? What, what do I do? It's raining. I didn't have a coat. It was nice day when I left. You're in Oregon, bro. <laughs> you know, you hang out a few minutes, the weather's going to change. So, there I was, in the middle of nowhere, on the Oregon coast, the sun going down, and it getting dark, and it's raining. I prayed to God, dear Lord, help me out of here. And I got down on my knees and I prayed like that, really. I prayed like that. And it was at that time, almost like a voice came into my head, said, climb a tree. The sun sets in the west, boy. I stood right up and I climbed up a tree and I found out where the sun was setting because the sun was going down right there. I figured that was the only way to find the beach was to go west. Well, I eventually I climbed up that hill and it was, I don't know, it was about 100 yards. I was kind of in a valley. No wonder I was hearing the sounds coming from a mountain. Now, at the time, I just thought, oh, all that schooling I learned in school, all that smart stuff, oh, finally came back to haunt me, right? No, it was God. It was God telling me that you know what to do. Rely not on your own understanding. There you I could have thought for the rest of my life that it was just because I was a smart dude. When I wasn't a smart dude. If I was a smart dude, I would have done that beforehand. That was my first encounter with God. And I still didn't believe in God until I was 45. Reflectively, I know that God himself told me, my own inner voice, my own consciousness relied not on my own understanding, but I knew that was the only way I was going to get out of there and find my way out. Praise God. That's my testimony. I found out I had been parallel on the beach for about the last three miles in the middle of the underbrush. When I climbed, jumped down out of that tree, boy, how do you like, like nothing you ever seen. Even monkeys fall out of trees, boy, how do you, I got down out of that tree faster than you could say lickety split. By the time I got to that little hill, right up over the crest, Boom! Cliff dropped right down onto the ocean beach. And it was dark. Dark. Did I thank God? No. I didn't, because I didn't know it was God at the time. 
I didn't have a clue. I just thought I was smart and figuring it out. I didn't realize that God was my own inner consciousness. I didn't know that. I remained ignorant for the next 32 years. I was 17. And you would have thought, a 17-year-old boy would have been able to comprehend that after he just prayed to God to help him. And all of a sudden he gets an answer. He would have been able to figure it out. No, I was too young, stupid. No, I thought it was all, I'm so smart. Yeah. No, I wasn't. If I was so smart, I wouldn't have got lost in the first place. That's my testimony. It was not until my wife told me that God is your own conscious mind and that Jesus came here to serve as an example to always do the right thing and no matter how much you do the right thing you're still going to be persecuted you're still going to be sought to be murdered no matter who you claim you are somebody out there is not going to believe you somebody's going to try to persecute you somebody's going to bully you somebody's going to be the biggest pain in your butt that you ever that's just fact of life you will be bullied maybe you're a bully in school now maybe you were then are you still I get bullied on YouTube all the time for my stupid videos I'll probably get bullied for this video because I mentioned God and somebody wanted to figure out I wanted to know how to how to recondition a purse and I didn't want to hear about God and all that stuff. I wanted to maintain my own fairy tale that I'm just living life and I'm gonna I'm just a bunch of worm dirt. Guess what? You don't believe in heaven? You don't believe in God? You love your children? Guess what? If you love your children, they're gonna be in heaven with you. But if you don't believe in children, you don't believe in God, and you pass that along to your children, guess what? You're not coming into heaven. If you don't believe in heaven, it's not going to be there for you. You are going to be worm dirt. You are going to be fire and brimstone. Because the world's going to, just as it did before, it goes in cycles. It, you're going to be in fire and brimstone. Whether you're in the grave, in a coffin, guess what? Meteor's going to hit the earth and it's going to boil up and you're going to end up in smoke. A lake of fire. But if you believe that there's a heaven... If you have that thought and you have that faith in your mind that heaven is there for you after you die, you ain't scared to die. So what? You die, you leave the earth, great. You have nobody persecuting you, nobody trying to kill you, nobody trying to steal from you, nobody trying to... Yeah, really. We don't know what's going to happen after we die. You can say, oh, I'm just going to be a bunch of worm dirt. Okay, well, you can be a bunch of worm dirt. Enjoy the time you left. have left. That's all you got. You can die in the car tomorrow. Driving down the road. Drunk driver can come in, hit you head on, and you'll die. And you say you love your children? Teach them about heaven. Teach them about, you're not going to, you're going to, you, you die, it's fine. You've taught your children what to do. You've taught them how to be better. To know that in eventuality, after they pass, everybody's going to rejoice in heaven. There's nothing bad about it. There's no negative that's going to happen. Unless you don't teach them that. Then you don't love your children because you will just end up being worm dirt. It's it. Worm dirt. Want to be with your children forever? You can. There's nothing wrong with believing in Jesus. Nothing wrong with it. Nothing's bad going to happen to you. You're not going to be condemned to hell. Because obviously if you don't believe in God or Jesus, there's no heaven or hell, right? You're just worm dirt. All I'm trying to do is help you understand. You don't have to listen to me. You don't have to believe me. You can shut off the YouTube 30 minutes ago. Something for you to think on. You want to see Jesus? Let me tell you about the time that I saw Jesus.
Yeah, I saw him on the cross with his thorns. Yeah, blood coming down his face and everything. Right after I learned who God was and who Jesus was, I laid in bed and I meditated. I prayed. Prayer, meditation, same stuff. I laid there with my eyes closed, focused in on that little TV screen of my mind. And I said, Jesus, if you're real, show yourself to me. And as I drifted off to sleep, all that fuzzy picture in my brain, all that stuff came together and formed the face of Jesus on the cross with this crown of thorns. He looked at me dead in the eye like I'm looking at you right now. I saw a tear run down his face. That, my friend, that was powerful. That's where my faith came from right there. I wanted to meet Jesus and have him give me a glass of water on the desert. That wasn't going to happen. And Jesus is right here. Right here. How you are as a human being. How you portray yourself as a piece of positivity. That. That. Doing the right thing. That is Jesus. And for those people who are going to bully me on the internet because I believe in Jesus you want to beat me down because I'm a Christian I don't care. You're not going to get into the kingdom of heaven unless you believe. Simple as that. You want to, you've got the choice right now to ask for Jesus as your Lord and Savior. There's, there's always a chance to the last breath that you have Jesus forgave a murderer on the cross as he was dying. You can do the same thing. It's not that far out of your reach. All you got to do is believe he existed. Believe that he was the example set for us man to follow. A man living without sin. Persecuted for his beliefs. Which has happened to Christians throughout since Christians have existed. Persecute them. Kill them. Chop their heads off. We don't need them in this world because this world is earthly. Jesus is godly. Power of the conscious mind is godly. The knowledge that we have to pass on is godly. I want to thank you for taking the time to watch this first step towards refurbishing this purse. I thank you for holding on this long and um, listening to my testimony. It's really important that you held on this long. I will pray for you tonight as I pray for everybody before we eat dinner. We pray for those people throughout the world who are suffering strife and distress and disharmony and discontent that God will come into your life and teach you that you can be better that you can grow to know and be and it will help to read the word and not read it as literal words because it's been tr it's been translated to I don't know how many different languages. It's the idea behind the words, not the literal transla translation. The idea behind Jesus that he lived a life without sin and was persecuted and murdered on the cross. This is Desert Artist.